Hi, I'm Teresa Hewlett. And I'm Steve Hewlett. And we're the creators of BalancedFitLifestyles.com. And we created this channel so that we could help you live a more healthy, balanced, and meaningful life. So if you're new to our channel, please be sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell so you can be notified when we release more videos. So if you are wanting to learn about, what is it? What, what makes us hungry. <laughs> what makes us hungry, please keep watching. <laughs> The first thing I want you to realize is, is for some reason right now, a lot of people feel like we have to eat all the time. You know, we've been, we've been told that we're supposed to eat every, you know, two to three hours to keep our basal metabolism up, which if you watched our last video, we talked about basal metabolism and that's not necessarily true. Um, but the other thing to really be aware of is when you think about what makes you hungry, it's not really a thought process. You don't just say, you know, I'm hungry now. It's actually a hormonal process. It really has to do with all the hormones that are in our body. So when we're hungry, there's a few different reasons of why we're hungry. And most of it has to do with, with our body's health. So our body, in our stomach, we have a hormone that's called ghrelin. And ghrelin is a substance, it's a hormone that it gets stimulated by having an empty stomach or when we're dehydrated, or when we're low on nutrients in our body. And this has causes our stomach to release this hormone called ghrelin. And ghrelin gets released and it goes up to the hypothalamus in the brain. It's the lateral hypothalamus in the brain. And when it stimulates the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus tells the body, oh, we're hungry. And so that's when, so like when your stomach's growling, it's because it's producing ghrelin. And so that's what makes us hungry in the first place. And the other thing they found out is the bacteria in our gut has a lot to do also with letting us know when we're hungry and also what kind of cravings we tend to have. And this was kind of kind of first looked at when they started looking at what's called fecal transplants, which is just what it says. It's when you actually take the poop from a healthy person and you inject it into the colon, into the rectum of, of a somebody who has like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or an inflammatory bowel disease. And they found that if you take the bacteria from a healthy person in their fecal material and you inject it into the rectum, then this bacteria, what it does is it overwhelms the bacteria that's in the, in the recipient's colon and you start having more growth of this good healthy bacteria that's in there. And one, it helps the colon, but the other fan thing that they found out is that the recipients of this fecal transplant, they start having cravings for the same food that the donor um, would eat all the time. And this started a, a whole new set of research that was going in to find out what's going on here. And that's exactly what happens. When you eat horrible, no nutritive value at all processed food, what that does is you actually are changing the type of bacteria that's in your gut from a, a, a healthy form of bacteria that we used to have into an extremely unhealthy form now that causes all kinds of trouble, and we'll go to that in, in future videos. But when you, when what these do, bacteria do, if you eat all this, this unhealthy, no nutrition value processed food, what happens is you make certain bacteria and they actually make you crave this same processed food. If you can start eating healthy, God made food with the real healthy meat, the healthy fat, the healthy f uh, fruits, the healthy vegetables, this changes the type of bacteria that's in your gut. And once you change that bacteria to a healthier bacteria, now when you have cravings, you're actually craving healthier meals like mixed nuts or fruits or vegetables or protein, but you actually start, start craving the healthy food again. So these two things, the ghrelin and the bacteria in your gut, both of these have to do with, with what actually makes you hungry and what you actually crave. The other thing that can make you hungry is there's, a, there's an organ in the brain, it's called the nucleus accumbens. And this nucleus accumbens is in the brain and this is the pleasure center of the brain. And this is the exact same pleasure center whether you are relaxing on a beach underneath palm trees or whether you're snorting cocaine or whether you're eating sugar. This is the exact same pleasure center. And so all these, just like, um, just like when you snort cocaine, you know, and, it, and at first, they, you know, it takes a little bit, but then all of a sudden it takes more and more and more. And so what you're ha what's happening is that nucleus is starting to become more and more resistant. And so it takes more and more. And they found that sugar 
actually stimulates the nucleus accumbens in the same way. So at first, when you're a little bitty baby and you're eating all this sugar, you know, it takes a little bit, but as you, as you continue to grow, as you get older and older and older, it takes more and more sugar, and so your nucleus accumbens becomes more resistant. So what you're actually doing is you're making your body addicted to processed food and making it addicted to sugar. So with this nucleus accumbens resistant like this, when you start having the ghrelin, when, you're, when your body's low on nutrients or when it's dehydrated or when it's in the stomach's empty and it produces ghrelin, now you're hungry and now it's the bacteria in your gut and it's your nucleus accumbens that actually makes you have your cravings of what you have. And if you're craving processed food and all this sugar, which is what you do, you're actually, you, we, we have made ourselves, we are addicted to sugar and that has, that has everything to do with our horribly obese rates that we have going on right now and our obesity rates they're horrible now and they're just getting fast getting higher quicker and so um so what we need to do is we need to change the type of food that we eat so we can get our nucleus accumbens where it's it's more uh, more sensitive now because the other thing they found out is when this nucleus accumbens are resistant to sugar it, when it becomes resistant, it's not just to the one substance that's causing the resistance, like sugar or cocaine or whatever, but it com becomes resistant to all pleasures in life. And this may have a lot to do with why we're starting to see more and more depression now also because of the, the increased amounts of processed food that we take in every single day. So, as far as hunger, the reason we have hunger is because our, our stomach produces ghrelin, which that's why your stomach's growling and the bacteria that's in our gut and our nucleus accumbens. So if we can start eating properly to adjust those three things, then all of a sudden when we get hungry, we're going to eat healthier foods and we're going to have more pleasure in life. If you have any questions about any of that or want me to expand on it, please let us know below and uh, we'll definitely give another video. But this was just a quick down and dirty of what makes us hungry. Thanks. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.